You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live. Next, featuring intimate and in-depth interviews with Black Hollywood's next edition of stars and influencers. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live. Next. Yeah. <laughs> it. It's Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. I got my Day. heart shirt on. I Aww. see it. It's Thank nice. You. It's cute. Thanks. It's cute. How you guys doing? Welcome to <laughs> another episode of Next. I'm your host, Nick Perdue, and I have the lovely Megan Thomas sitting across. Hi, hi. And we have uh, the beautiful, talented, talented. Jacqueline Beatham. <laughs> Yay, <Let's see>. Jacqueline! <laughs> We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. You're so tall. I know. How tall are you? I'm 5'9", but then I always wear like five or six inch heels. So and then I'm like 6'2". Thank Love you. Love your shoes. <laughs> you know we came in, I was like, oh, she's super tall and model-esque. Right. I'm really tall, I know. Definitely that's okay, works. That's great. Yeah. Definitely works for you. <laughs> like, oh, I'm thanks. not mad at the height. Because like, like, some people are like, you're, like, you're just too tall. But like, you know, for you, it works. No, it's but cool. it's it's kind of like the only thing people ever say to me. Like, they're just like, you're so tall. Where I'm like, okay, cool. I'm born <laughs> like, this yeah. way. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. Do you date guys that are shorter than you? I'm actually married. Oh, are you? Yeah. Is, Is he hubby short? But no, he's six. He's like six three, almost six four. Ah, so, good height. Yeah. So I lucked out. But I right. had I have dated people shorter than me okay. in the past, and it was always interesting. Like that one moment when they try to pick you up, but then they can't, <laughs> and you're like, Well, I don't. I just don't think this can go any further. Like I'm wow. I'm done. So. That's hilarious. <laughs> Especially on Valentine's Day, they try to pick you up on Valentine's Day, and like, oh. Right. Oh, great. That just made me feel even bigger. Thanks. Oh, God. I'm like thinking like dirty dancing, especially because you're a ballerina. Like you lift some. Oh, no. Can't pick you up. I'm little. Sorry. That's fine. Let's jump right in. Yeah, let's. let's. (laughs) We'll just change the subject. That's how we do it. We're like so goofy here. (laughs) Jackie. Yeah. You grew up in Long Beach, LBC. The LBC, yes. yes. How was that? How was that growing up, Dylan? Um, well, I love California. Um, I, I love it. Like I love the beach. I love having great weather. Um, I grew up luckily in Southern California. There's a lot of arts. Um, I think ballet is very underappreciated in Southern California. Um, so I was able to do an outreach program when I was younger and I learned ballet and I loved it so much and I feel like that was a huge outlet for me if I wouldn't have had that I don't really know where I would be today um but it established really my whole life it taught me discipline and all these things um and then I eventually left um Southern California to pursue ballet even more and now I'm back here because I love it (laughs) Yeah. What made you want to do ballet? Um, my sister was a cheerleader and I always loved like the dance aspect. Like she'd always teach me like the dances she learned and mm-hmm. I always thought it was really cool. And so I went to like a jazzer size type class. Like <laughs> it was really it was called jazz the jazz connection. Like it was so like <laughs> Yeah, it was very interesting. Um, and the teacher was like, you need to do ballet. Like, you have the facility for, like, a ballerina. And I was like, oh, but I want to do, like, jazzercise. Like, this is way <laughs> cooler. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I don't even know how, like, they had, like, a younger class for kids for jazzercise. Know, but like, they did old ladies, like, do jazzercise? Kind of, yeah, <laughs> totally. But, of course, like, the, the 12-year-old me was like, I want to do jazzercise. And wear my scrunchies. As I still have one on. Um, yeah, so I started ballet, and then I, like, fell in love with it. It was really cool, so. And you went to a ballet high school. Yeah, it's like a ballet academy. So, like, pretty much you're homeschooled. Okay. So then you can just dance all day. Um, So you're just living with, like, guys and girls. Um, We had, like, townhouses, and we had, like, a nanny that lived downstairs that we just never really saw. Um, (laughs) pretty much. And like, we just wrote on a board when we like were leaving, like what time we left and like where we were going. And when we'd get home, we'd like write on the board. She was just like, we didn't even know if she was like alive sometimes. We're like, 
have you heard from her today? Like, <laughs> has anyone seen her? It's very interesting. Um, I don't know if my mom ever knew that, so. Uh, that's <laughs> right. I paid all that money for you. <laughs> well, I actually had a scholarship. Oh, um, nice. Thank God, because it, it's very expensive. I don't right. think people realize in um, ballet programs that have outreach programs are so important because it is so much money, and I feel like it's a dying art form, so to be able to let kids know about it and have it help them um, in their lives is so important. So, right. Yeah. And now you perform, I mean, there's a list. So let me go through the list. Ballet, San Jose, Houston Ballet, Anaheim Ballet, Luminario Ballet, and the Legion <laughs> of Extraordinary Dancers. I mean, you've done a lot. Yeah. W did you always want to be a professional ballerina or is this something that just happened? I remember um, when we were in high school, we had to do like, uh, or it was junior high, I don't remember, but we had to do like a career essay and I was just like I just want to be a ballerina and they're like well that doesn't make that much money like are you aware <laughs> of that and I was like I don't care like that's all I wanted to do like right. I had no other aspirations um I just wanted to perform and my parents were like but you're gonna go to college right you're gonna go to school and I'm like no I'm not <laughs> actually <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do right so um but it, it's tough I think once you are older and you're still not making a lot of money and you're working 10 to 11 hours a day and your body's like aching every single minute. You get home, you right. have to take Epsom salt baths and soak your feet and then you have to stretch and do more exercise when you get home so you don't get injured the next day. Like it's, it's just a huge process. Right. Um, you kind of start to think, well, I don't know if I can do this very much longer mm -hmm. or, you know, what am I going to do when I'm 40 and can't do it anymore? So right. kind of figure out what you want to do. So. Wow. Yeah. It sounds like, because the ballerina is like, so really athletes, like that right, right. there, that's, yeah. Oh, it's, it, it's athlete. crazy. And then plus you can't eat a lot because you have to stay under a certain weight because it's like, like in your contract. Wow. wow. So I was like, um, I really want to eat cake. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> over this. So I'm good. Like people think actresses have to stay thin and what I'm like, you guys have no idea. Right. Like I am so happy with just being an actress and being able to eat my like steak and potatoes right. like after I'm done with the day. Right. Like I'm totally great with that. So, oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. So now how, how has ballet either helped or hurt your career? <sighs> um, I think it gave me a huge backbone like, and it gave me like a tough skin because I feel like acting is, it's brutal, um, but I feel like ballet is like just even a more I don't want to say more difficult, but it, it pretty much is. Because mm -hmm. I feel like there's not a lot of money. There's not a lot of jobs. Um, and everyone is obsessed and super passionate about it. So you have, like, so much competition. Um, and plus, like, there's so many things that go with it um, that are very mentally challenging as well as physically challenging. So I think that with acting, it, it prepared me. Like, I got a lot of no's. Mm -hmm. And I tested a lot. And people would be like, you're so great. But and then I'd be like, but I didn't get the job. Like, how great <laughs> am I if I, like, didn't get it? That doesn't make right. sense. Um, so, and it gave me, like, the discipline to, like, keep pushing. I feel like a lot of people, like, after a few years, they would just give up. And um, so it made me, you know, very diligent. And then also I think um, – if I had like eight auditions in a day, I wouldn't just like, I have some friends that'll just be like, go to one and then they'll go home because it's like too much like driving or whatever. Um, and I would like make it work. Like right. I'd make sure I got to every single one, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think it hurt. How did it hurt my career? I haven't figured that one out yet. I don't know. I'll let you know if something comes up and I'm like, that's what hurt my <laughs> career. <laughs> That did it. That so, did it. So you figured out that, you know, you're not going to be a ballerina for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Is that what made you move to Hollywood? Um, I actually, I was in the process. I called my mom one day and I was like, I'm so, I'm, I, I was probably about 30 or 40 pounds lighter than I am now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I was like really, really thin and I was just like, I'm really not happy. Like, I love to dance. It makes me so happy to dance, but mm. like having to be this thin and going home and eating like celery and then waking wow. up and eating like half an apple isn't really like that great, <laughs> you right, know? Right, right. 
Um, and so I called my mom and I was like, I don't know what I want to do, but I don't, don't want to do this right now. Right. And she's like, well, you really like Pilates, like go get your Pilates certification. I was like, okay. So I moved to, um, Orange County Mm -hmm. and I went to a certification center there and I got my certification was dancing there as well in a smaller company, but I was really happy. Right. Um, and my friend needed a roommate in LA and she was like, let's just move to LA. Like, let's just do it. And I was like, okay. And so we moved. And I was walking down the street, and I got a modeling agent. Wow! And so, <laughs> yeah, and then, that that's how it works here, right? Exactly. Yeah. Walking, yeah, down, the walking street. down the street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Granted, she is she is. You said know, five you, five nine. Yeah. Right. She's a model so, height. Yeah. 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 And I booked an Adidas campaign oh, like wow. a week later. Oh, so wow. I was like, well, I guess like this is kind of <laughs> cool. Like maybe I'll try this. Right. Um, and I went to an acting class, and then I really, because I didn't even think about acting. Like, mm-hmm. I honestly was just, like, I just love to perform, but I I had done a ton of school plays when I was younger, and, right. you know, I was always in, like, theater things when I was younger, but I never really thought about it. Um, and then I took an acting class, and I just, like, loved it. Like, I thought it was so cool, and the acting coach was actually a manager, and she asked mm-hmm. to rep me, and so I was like, all right, cool, <laughs> like, let's try it, and it kind of just went from there right. yeah. how long ago was that three years ago oh my gosh so that was a quick yeah for most people compared to most people yeah it's good. been pretty quick but i was i was still kind of impatient <laughs> like the last pilot season bef- that i booked the show i was like this is the last one like ah. i actually turned down a neo tour because i was going to tour with mm-hmm. neo to stay for pilot season mm-hmm. and so i was like this is the last one if i don't you know, get anything, then I'm going to start dancing again because I don't really know what, like, this is great, but right. I'm, I'm not going to just, like, sit around and right. be like, please, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Do you do other dance besides ballet? Um, yeah. I mean, like, I can do hip-hop and stuff like that, but I feel like hip-hop is transitioned, like, it's so, like, hard, like, even for girls now. Like, hard as in, like, I don't want to say movements. manly. Not difficult, but just like like hard, like like harsh movement. Harsh yeah, movement. It's, okay, it's gotcha. very like you know. Yeah, what, when you what twerk, that, you gotta pop movie? a little. You know, twerking's fine. <laughs> but I'm talking <laughs> like twerking's fine. Twerking, twerking's fine. Um, I'm just talking about it's like almost like more like it's more aggressive. You got served, right? Huh? Very. You got yes, served. Yes, and yeah. I'm not that kind of dancer. Like okay, I literally yeah. will just look at the girls and be like, I think you're gonna attack me. Like I'm nervous <laughs> right now. Like. I want to be sexy and like that kind of hip hop. Like uh-huh. that's more my thing. Gotcha. So twerking's fine. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> love it. But well, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. So I would go to these like hip hop dance auditions and I would literally just laugh. I'm like, oh, this is such a joke. Like, and these girls are all like five foot and they can move so fast. And I just felt like this like Amazon creature, like, right. It was just, I don't know. That's yeah. All right. But, but you're absolutely stunning. So I read that you're Samoan, Mexican, and Sioux Indian. Yes. What now? We, how does that work in your family? Who is what? <sighs> so <laughs> I'm and and I'm white. Yes. Um, but my dad is um, half Samoan and half Mexican, and wow. my mom is Sioux Indian and white. So wow. That's yeah. A lot. Oh I was I never know. guessed. I'm, well, I stay out of the sun. I tan <laughs> very quickly. No, it's so bizarre because when I'm super, du- like when I get really dark, mm-hmm. people don't know what I am. Right. And so they don't really know where to put me. They're like, she's not a white girl, but she's not like, eth- like we don't know what you, like I literally have booked ethnically ambiguous, right. like all yeah. the time for like commercials. Right. So I don't know. It's really weird. Well, that's the, what's hot now. So I guess that's a yeah. good, you know, yeah. a good category yeah. to be in. Well, yeah. I mean, it's even like, like now you have like a slight exotic look because you don't look just regular white. Yeah. You know? <laughs> regular white. <laughs> Like, really? Well, I mean, regular you know, white. Like, you don't look very, you know, I, I, I can say this, but it's black history, but I can say that. So, <laughs> You're allowed to pass, okay. Yeah. But no, cause, cause like, I, like, 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 you can tell that there's like a little something mixed in, you know, right, you just yeah. don't know exactly what it is. But no, right, no. right. I would have never guessed, though. I would have never guessed. Or, do you mm-hmm. like Samoan? Do you say Samoan? Samoan, yeah. Samoan food. Yeah. Um, yes, I do. I love it. Like, my last name is actually German Samoan, so like, if you've heard of like the Reeds, like all the football players. Right. The really big guys. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of reeds, like the reeds in Samoan, or reeds and Bethams are related. So wow. we're like, it's a, it's German Samoan descent is my last ah. name. Yeah. Interesting. Learn something new every day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
So you currently star in Tyler Perry's number one <laughs> yeah. show. Yay! Right? The haves and the have nots as Amanda Cryer. Amanda Cryer. Right. So she's what is special? She is. <clears throat> she is. You know, because I've I've seen a couple episodes. I haven't really watched the entire season, but I will say this. I enjoy your character <laughs> and I enjoy Tika's character. Right. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. But what, what was it like working Wait, with Wait, why do you enjoy me and Tika? The like two young girls on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Because the beauty just stands out, I'm assuming. I'm a young man. <laughs> you, know, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm a young man. No, I mean, no, because, I mean, just, just kind of based off on, on the show, you know, I mean, take his, take his character. She's very, like, she's right. a bitch. I hate to right. say it, but she, she's, Yeah, but you, know, you love to like, hate her. Right, yeah. right, exactly, exactly. You yeah. know, and so, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I feel that Amanda, I mean, you know, she can be a little, like, you know, like, I, I want to see a little more, you know, prods in the fire with her. I want to kind of yeah. see, you know, show me the, you know. So, I don't know. I mean, just get ready. Ah, okay. yes. Yeah, so okay. Yes. Okay, so it's coming. So what was it like to work with, you know, Tyler Perry and, and Oprah Winfrey? Um, I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, they're like two of the like strong, like most powerful people in the industry pretty much. Um, but they're, they're, they're pretty freaking awesome people. Um, Tyler's a pleasure to work with. He's hilarious. Um, and I trust him. I mean, literally we've had we were shooting once and I, I was really uncomfortable with the scene. I don't know why. It was just like, it felt weird to me. Mm. And he's like, trust me, like, trust me. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. Like, I know you got me. Okay, cool. Mm. And it like the scene ended up being like freaking awesome. So, um, he works so hard and he is there before all of us and there after we all leave, right. you know, he, mm. I've never met such a hard worker. Um, I used to think I was like the hardest worker in the world until I met Tyler and I was like, okay, you, you, you get the cake. <laughs> you win. Hands you down. win. Um, yeah, I, 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 I feel really blessed and I'm so grateful for it for sure. So. Did you, did you have any, uh, any preconceived notions before working with t Tyler Perry? Uh, I was really nervous. I, I, I had never met him and, um, I didn't really know what to suspect, you know, and mm. it was a drama. It wasn't a comedy. And um, so I was I was just nervous. I didn't know. I wanted to, like, make him happy and right. do a great job. You know, you put all that pressure on you first. Yeah. And then when, when I met him, I was, like, totally cool. Like, once I met him and was able to, like, give him a hug and be like, yay, this is <laughs> awesome. Like, I was fine. But I was, I was really nervous just because it's, like, a very powerful person in the industry. Right. But he's... He's so loving, and so is Oprah. Like, when I met her, it was like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was so crazy. But you kind of get it. Like, when you meet her, like, you're like, oh, yeah, that's why you're Oprah. Like, you get yeah. it. Mm. She's, like, just very loving and has this warm presence. And, yeah. What's the first thing you said when you met Oprah, though? I gave her a hug. <laughs> I didn't even say anything. I don't even think I say, said anything. I just, like, hugged her. And Tyler's like, this is Jacqueline. She plays Amanda. <laughs> and I was like, sorry. I was just so excited. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. That's so awesome. Super geeked out. Yeah. Right. So what was the call like when <clears throat> your agent or your manager called you and said, hey, you got the role for Amanda Cryer? Um, I, we were actually moving. Me and my husband were moving. And so I, our apartment was, like, super empty. And I literally, like, just think I ran in, like, ten <laughs> circles around our living room. I was, like, on speakerphone and, like, freaking out. I was really excited. Oh, yay. So yeah. what, what was the audition process like? Um, I had my first audition here mm. in L.A., and they actually lost my tape for producers. Oh. Ah. So they called, and they're like, hey, can you come back in and, you know, audition again? It's right. not a callback, but we want to we wanna make sure they get your tape. And so I was like, okay. So I went back in, and literally, like, the next day, they, like, were like, okay, we want to fly out to Atlanta to, like, read for Amanda. So I flew out there, and there was this other girl, and she was blonde. So I'm like, okay, they're either going to go blonde or brunette. And it was just us two. And in the scene, she was, like, like, bawling, like crying, calling herself a loser. And in the scene, like, in the audition, I chose to cry. But in the callback, I chose not to cry. Mm -hmm. And I just got more, like, introverted. And um, I, I was first, and then when the other girl came out, she was, like, tears down her face. And I was like, well... <laughs> she booked it oh well like whatever like and then I was like it just was behind me I was right. just like whatever and then the producers like came in and they're like Jacqueline come here 
I was like, okay. Like, I thought I was in trouble. Right. Like, I was like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, we really, like, loved you. You know, we're going to contact your people. I was like, oh, okay. And then I called my manager. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, they said they're going to contact you, but they didn't say, like, it's yours or, like, you got yeah. it. So then it was, like, two days, and then I found out I got it. But it was, like, the longest two days <laughs> right. ever. Right. But, yeah. Was was Tyler in the room when you when you did the audition? He was, but he was actually shooting a Medea's Christmas. Mm -hmm. okay. So he was actually auditioning us in between sh like his shots. Oh, was wow. he in the? He was dressed Medea. like Medea. Yeah. That's oh hilarious, and you ha it's like a serious scene, right? <laughs> yeah, he he like <laughs> stayed back, like so we couldn't like really see him because right. he didn't want to like ruin our audition. Right. But it was just like Medea's watching me right now. Like, this is so <laughs> awesome. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, that is funny. <laughs> right. Um, so what have you learned from working on the haves and have nots? So much. Um, I didn't realize how strong of a person I was. Um, we shoot, Tyler shoots very quickly. We shoot like 60 pages a day, wow. which in Hollywood, they, that usually takes like seven to eight days. Right. And we do it all in one day. Wow. And they're like intense scenes. Like my character is so emotional and so crazy. And now she's like bipolar and schizophrenic. Like it was just a lot of emotion, like overload because we shot a different episode every day. Mm. So, um, we didn't really have time to like pull out of it, mm -hmm. which was good in a way. Cause then we were just like immersed in it, but, um, it was kind of like acting boot camp. So mm -hmm. I realized I was like, okay, throw whatever you want at me now. Like right. I can do it, <laughs> you know? So that was cool. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned is just that, you know, I, I'm a lot stronger than I realized and, um, I can learn lines way faster than I ever thought I could. Wow. So that was, yeah. What's the best part about working on that show? <clears throat> I think the people. Um, our cast is awesome. We all get along. And I've heard on a lot. There's been, like, horror stories I've heard from other people mm -hmm. about, you know, being with a cast that they don't get along. And it's, like, right. a labor to go into work every day. And it's not like that at all. Like, it's actually, like, we're excited to be there. We're all excited to work together and to have, like, great scenes together. So. What's the most challenging part about that about that show? <clears throat> Sorry. What? <laughs> Sorry. What's, no, what's the most challenging part about working on that show? Um, probably just the the, the pace. Okay. I mean, it's doable. We're fine. We get through it. Right. Um, but it is very quick. And sometimes we're getting pages the day of, mm. and we're, like, learning our lines, like, in the makeup chair. Right. Um, or we get it, like, the day before. We get our changes that night at, like, 2 a.m., and we have to be on set at 5 Um and it shoots in Atlanta. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It shoots in Atlanta, and my husband's here. So I think in, on a personal challenge, like, it's really hard that he's here and I'm there, and, you know, How I long do you guys him. shoot? How many months? Uh, like a month and a half to two months. Wow. Okay. It's not that bad. It's but like the intensity, really though, for that time period, that's a lot. That's yeah. yeah. Sounds, because, like, it sounds like you shoot, like, a, like a soap opera. Right. Like, yeah. That's kind of right. what it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, you know. What? What do you want? I'm gonna have some water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, okay, let me get ready for this one. <laughs> what do you want? You know, like, what do you want to see a man to do in these upcoming seasons and these upcoming episodes? Or can you kind of, you know, not say let the cat out of the bag, but kind of, you know, leave a little catnip down there for us? Um. Well, she kind of does do what I wanted her to do, so it's exciting. Um, okay. But she she's seeking her revenge, and I think any girl or female or male who watches the show and they saw what the professor did to her mm -hmm. in the first season kind of would want that too, I think. You know, I mean, it is a story, so it's, you know, not real life that she's actually doing these crazy things to him, but... So I, I do want her to do them because it's not her life, you know. Right. Um, you know, in real life, I would want him just to get arrested and kind of, like, get what he deserves in that. But yeah. since, you know, she can be crazy and stalk him and do all these insane <laughs> things to him, then heck, yeah, she should. Because he, like, scared the heck out of this girl and raped her. I mean, it's horrible. Like, sh he made her want to take her life. Right. So right. Um, I think that that is what I would want for her for sure. Well, let me ask you this, though. What? 
when watching these episodes, mm-hmm. right? These upcoming episodes. <laughs> yeah. Will the audience cheer and be like, yeah, like, is that what we are going to do? Or are we going to be like, oh, you should have done I think so. I mean, she really takes it there. And I think that it's um, it's very entertaining. I'm, I haven't seen the episode, so I'm like also kind of nervous because I haven't seen them. But I don't know if you've seen the episode where I'm like he's in the shower and I like break into his house. But it's like that one. my oh, husband God. was actually like freaked out. Wow. He was like, he's never seen me act like that. And I go like bad shit crazy right. sorry I just cussed no that's okay, okay. we're online <laughs> okay <laughs> but I go crazy on him and so he was just like whoa I've never seen you act like that so um I think I mean people even with me breaking into his house and you know telling him that he's gonna feel all the pain and suffering that I felt wow. I mean people love it right they're kind of like calling me Norman Bates <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Norman Bates. Just okay. Norman Bates. Right. Okay. <laughs> so now that the first season is done and it did very well and the second season is getting some really good ratings, do you feel like, is there any pressure to do better or is it kind of like, okay, we're good? Um, I think it's exciting. I don't feel pressure at all. I think like, okay, if I could like get raped and attempt suicide and now stalk and right. you know be like this predator type girl like i'm like okay what like now what are we gonna do like right, throw right. it at me like i i think it's really exciting and i think tyler's writing's amazing and he's such a great director that it's obviously been working so i don't know why it wouldn't keep working you know right so and i i have faith in him and um trust him and so yeah i think okay. it's just super exciting okay good but were there any scenes that you shot either the first season or, you know, for season two that you were like, you know, besides one you said like you feel like a little uncomfortable? Was, was there anything that you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe that we're about to shoot this? Um, <laughs> after some scenes, I could hear Tyler just like laughing because I'm, I'm, I get so psycho and I get so crazy <laughs> that like it would kind of pull me out and be like, oh my gosh, like I'm so psycho. <laughs> like, <laughs> it'd kind of pull me out and be like, oh my gosh, this girl's crazy. Um, but I think I would just fully immerse myself into like crazy and really think about like what this girl has gone through and it was fun. I don't know. It was just kind of fun to play this like completely whacked out character. Right. Um, but there were the only, you know, it was weird. The only time I was really nervous was when I had to, I got to dance and I was really freaking nervous. Really? And yeah. I've done that my whole life. So yeah. I was like, what is your problem? <laughs> like calm wow. down right now. That was the only time I was nervous though. And it's like what I've been doing my whole life. So right. it was really bizarre, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. Are there are there any guest stars that you want to see come on the show? You know, for a couple episode arc or whatever. Come come back. Or either either come come back or just like a fresh face. Like, oh, I want to work with you know so and so. Hey Tyler. Hey <laughs> Tyler. Call, uh, call, uh. Um, I don't know. I mean, my husband acts. That'd be kind of cool if he like came on the show. But I don't really know like how like who he would play. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that would be fun. Um, one of my best friends is an actor, Fred Stoller, but he's a comedian. But um, the the guy that uh, Robert, who plays the rapist, is like hilarious, and he's a comedian too. So really, yeah, you never like know people's capabilities, mm. right? Um, in acting, so yeah, his Twitter's hilarious. <laughs> like what he talks about the show, like it's so funny, right? Um, yeah. When was the first time somebody recognized you from the show when you were out? Um, I'm trying to... Oh, I think I was in, like, a bar class, like, taking, like, bar burn or something. Uh-huh. And some lady just kept staring at me. And I was <laughs> like, am I really sweating that much? Or, like, you know, like, I'm trying to figure out. Or I'm like, am I just, like, right. doing it? Like, do I yeah. look crazy doing these, like, weird pulsing moves or something? <laughs> and um, she came up to me and was like, it was right when the... The, the, I don't even know if the pilot had come out, but she was okay. p- part of press. Okay. Um, and she watched the pilot already. Uh. And she was, and so, like, I didn't think anyone knew who the heck I was or whatever. Right. Because um, the show hadn't even come out. Um, 
But I think the cutest story was I was me. My mom came to Atlanta mm -hmm. um, for her birthday, and I took her to this like random breakfast place. I don't even remember what it was called, but it was like so random. Just, right. It was like almost like a house type thing. But um, this little girl came up to me, and you're like, "Are she was like, are you her? <laughs> she was like five, Aww. and I was like." Hi, I'm Jacqueline. And she's like, no, you're Amanda. <laughs> and I was like, okay, first, why are you watching that? <laughs> right, I'm not, because right. you were like five years old. And you really know, like, this is crazy. Right, right. And it was like the cutest thing ever. But I was like, ooh, like, <laughs> this show's a little, <laughs> right. it just goes over her head. Maybe it's like, she's still five. It's okay. But it was like the cutest thing. That like made my day. It was really, really okay. cool. Yeah. Do you feel like you're famous? I don't think so. Okay. Um... I think there's very, very famous people. Um, I, I don't, I don't like really you could know. still go to the store with rollers in your hair if you wanted to, or you're, you're past that. Um, <laughs> cause that's a level. There's a certain level. I mean, I still go out without makeup and I don't really care. I mean, if someone knew, like saw me without makeup on it, it's not like I'd be like, Oh my gosh, don't look at me. Like right. whatever. It's just my, I'm living my life, right. you know, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, paparazzi isn't, like, following me around yet, you know? Like, I feel okay. okay. So, it's, I don't know. I think fame is such a bizarre thing. Right. It kind of weirds me out. But um, I know it comes with the territory. So, yeah. but it's, str I, 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 I think I wanted it when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like, I always thought that was so cool. Like, you'd watch, like, the E! True Hollywood story. And right. you're like, whoa, that's so cool. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, wow, that's so invasive. <laughs> right. like, All in your it's business. It's so right. crazy. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's bizarre. Like when you're younger, I feel like you like kind of dream of that and like, wow, look at all the cool stuff. And then as you get older, it's like, it's very, very bizarre. And like just seeing Tyler deal with it and like having people just like stare right. at him as he walks down the street. And it's, it's a lot. Right. I, it's, I mean, it's definitely across to bear so yeah. yeah i don't know so how has your life changed since the show um, or has it changed i mean i can afford to eat now <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm not eating green beans out of a can anymore i eat them fresh um i don't know honestly that's probably about it like i feel pretty much the same um that year was probably the most life-changing year because I got married that year and then booked the show like wow. two months later. Wow. <laughs> so it was just kind of like a lot of changes happening at once. So mm. I think, um, I honestly think like getting married was more life-changing than booking the show. Is that bad to say? No. no. Um, Your husband likes that. Huh? <laughs> Your husband likes that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love you. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, um, but, but like, do 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 people treat you differently now? Like, do some of your friends oh, treat you differently? Can we like, talk oh, about Jacqueline. that. Oh, my I've God. actually lost a lot of friends. Really? Like, really? people that were like at my wedding, like wow. I don't even talk to anymore. Why? It's weird. Oh gosh. Um, you know how people always say like your friends are there when you're like at the bottom. Right. Like your true friends will be there when like hmm? shit goes down. Right. I think it's like when you're like. You know, they always say it's, like, lonely on the top. Like, right. I feel like it's kind of like that. Like, I okay. literally had people, like, unfollow me, like, defriend me on Facebook because, really? and then I, like, friend requested them. I was like, how are we not friends on Facebook? This is so weird. Like, right. my naiveness yeah. comes in. And um, they're like, oh, well, actually, I defriended you. Like, literally wrote on my wall this. I'm not <gasps> even joking. People wow. I've known for 10 years, like, longer. I defriended you because I just saw all the good things you were doing, and I couldn't handle it. Are you serious? What? Haters. <sighs> That's the I dumbest swear. thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I s and these are people, like, that were at my wedding, like, right. supporting me, like, walking That's down crazy. the aisle. But then when I, like, book a TV show, they're like, mm-mm. Sorry, we can't mm. we can't be friends anymore. I'm like, okay, cool. Wow. Thank God I have my husband. Right. But yeah, it's I think that that's been the weirdest thing is people that actually do know me. Yeah. I feel like, and I haven't I haven't changed. Like that's the thing. They're always like, you change. You're Hollywood now. It's like actually no. Like you're changing. Yeah. Like I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm the same person. But um, my parents think it's really cool, and they've been really supportive and. I think that's like the coolest part is like my family is like thinks it's like awesome. Right. So, oh. yeah. Well, you know, and like, and that's, that's good too, because now it's like, okay, you know, you, you got this show. And so these friends 
mm-hmm. you know, are leaving you alone now, right? You know, so you know, a couple yeah. years down the line, you start, you know, doing both, you know, blockbuster movies now. Then like, hey, you want to come to the hey. premiere? Like, yo, I was kidding about that thing a couple years ago. <laughs> but at least like you know now who you know yeah. you're real, who you're true. It's not all are. my friends. I mean, some of my friends like we've gotten even closer. Yeah. You know, like it's not not all of them have been that way at all. But I've definitely seen a change in a lot of people right. that I thought would never ever our relationship would never bend or break. Mm. And it's it's just it's bizarre. Right. It's really weird to see, but. Jealousy is crazy. It is, yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's not even, it, it's a different, it's, you know, my girlfriends, it's not even like a dude or something like, and they're right. being jealous. It's weird. I don't know. That's okay. Girl, Jesus had haters. So. That's true. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus has haters. <laughs> it's bound to happen. <laughs> okay, so you have a, a you have a nonprofit called yeah. Beatham Ballet. How do you guys know all this stuff? That's so crazy. We, we did our and we have your social security number right here. Um, no, we so you you started Beatham Ballet Theater as a nonprofit. Yeah. Why and what is it about? Um, well, like I said, like I was an outreach student. I had scholarships growing up. If I didn't have that you know outreach program to attend to or have those scholarships given to me like I would have never learned ballet um and my parents still did pay for things too you know part and it was still even more you know it's just so expensive that I feel like ballet is a dying art form art in general is dying um you know they take out PE now in Los Angeles school districts they take out any kind of art in school districts so it's I don't really know how these kids will really develop or learn artistry. Right. Um, and that was, that's kind of like my whole career. It's been my whole life. If I didn't have art, like I said, like I don't, I could have gotten mixed up into the wrong things or, you know, really have not had an outlet to go to. Um, so I wanted to give back and give kids that wouldn't have the opportunity to learn about art or have the funds to learn about it to be able to. Um, so I actually just found a space and we're going to start the classes. I've been just doing like random workshops here and there. So we're going to be starting doing classes and start actually like developing it more. Um, it's it's a, it's a lot of work and it's a huge process. So it's taken a little bit of time, but, um, I'm really, really excited. Oh, nice. And what age group do you have typically? Um, well, I think like eight years old is kind of when it, you can really start developing. Um, so we're going to do like 8 to 18. Okay. Yeah. So oh, That's good. Well, I was trying to see if I could sign up. <laughs> well, you can come to my other classes that are <laughs> outreach whenever you want. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so you said that you were a homebody earlier, right? But what did are... I? Uh, I, I am, but I don't even remember saying Did that. she? <laughs> she did. She did. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's listening. He is, like, we're not. We're not, <laughs> really. <laughs> well, what, what, are, what are some of your hobbies? Um, besides ballet, mm-hmm. I love to cook. What's I your love... best dish? Oh, I guess we'd have, I love meatloaf. Is that really? so random? I love meatloaf and potatoes. <laughs> you are steak and potatoes kind of good. I know, I really Meatloaf am. and potatoes. I okay. eat a lot of vegan food, mm-hmm. but then like I break down, like I'll start bruising uh. and I'll be like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to eat some steak. <laughs> I'm going to eat some like beef. <laughs> so bad. Sorry, vegan people. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, I love making meatloaf. It's really easy and it tastes really good. And mashed potatoes, and I love Brussels sprouts. Really? <sighs> Me too. I love Brussels sprouts. You just have Brussels to sprouts. know. You have to know how to you do it right. You have to know right. how to make right. them. That is the key. Yeah, my husband never ate any vegetables until we got married, and now he eats vegetables all the time, like, loves them. It's just, you have yeah. to know how to, like, prepare food and make right. anything taste good. Have you ever made a meatloaf cake? What? I just, I'm sorry, I just saw this randomly on Instagram. It's like meatloaf, and they take the mashed potatoes, and they use it to oh, make yes. it like the icing. It's almost like a casserole. Yeah, but it yeah. looks like a cake. If you didn't yeah. know, you'd be like, it's uh, a cake. It looks like a cake, yeah. yeah. I have done that. It's really good. Have you really? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I thought it was like a legitimate cake. It looks like a cake. I know, it was like, meatloaf. I was like oh. yeah. with like sponge cake on top. Yeah, so like gross. Like, That's disgusting. <laughs> okay, so what are your other hobbies? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, what else? I love to take pictures. Um, I don't know. I sound so boring. I'm like, I dance. I like to dance, um, cook. And then kind of like my career and my life with my husband, that's like all I really have time for. But 
Yeah. Is That's it, all you need. Right, it is. Is it hard to to balance your marriage and your career? Or have you guys found the balance? Are you still trying to figure well, it out? Well, he actually grew up in this industry. So he... Um, I'm so like blessed and grateful that he he's actually helped me so much like I won't know about so many things and he'll explain it um so he he's so supportive like oh, if I have good. to be gone or you know he'll be like I want to visit you as much as you want me to but if you need space and you need to focus like I completely understand you know especially when I'm playing like psycho girl um <laughs> he's like you take your space you go ahead um but no I think I think it was kind of weird at first because we just got married and then I booked the show and I was leaving. Right. Um, so the first season was a little like weird trying to figure out like we have been attached to the hip ever since we met. Um, so I think it was weird like we had never spent more than two days apart. So being mm -hmm. gone, I mean, that even that first week I was like, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, this is crazy, you know. Right. But then we kind of figured it's just figuring it out like each step, you know, like taking it day by day and. Yeah, I think I think we're like fine with it. It's it's good. Yeah. What's some marriage advice you have oh, for God. our lovers on Valentine's Day? Don't listen to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to me. Don't read any books. Um, talk to your spouse. Like honestly, I if we ever got in a fight, I would go like Google or like <laughs> research and be like, "Is this normal?" And then I realize like every single person is different, and every advice is different, right. and you can't. You have to go to the source. Like, okay. if something, like, makes you upset, don't ask, don't talk to your girlfriends about it. Like, talk to your spouse about it. Be like, I know I'm probably being a stupid girl right now, but that actually hurt my feelings. And I know that sounds really lame, but that did. Right. And they'll be like, uh, you totally misconstrued that because you're a girl. And you're like, yep, okay, cool. We're good. Let's go out to dinner now. You right, know, like, right. but then I feel like when you talk to other people and you get everyone else's opinions and it's, like, this crazy whirlwind is, like, when – that issue that was probably nothing is now like a huge issue right. because everyone else is like, uh, uh, that's not okay. Right. And it's actually fine, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think just talk to your partner and don't, don't really heed to other people's advice when they don't really need to be telling you sure, stuff. That's true. Don't listen to your single friends. Okay. Yeah, that are like, oh, that's not okay. And I'm like, really? Because you've had a boyfriend in like <laughs> two years. So cool things. Right. And that's where they're like, well, you're not my friend on Facebook anymore. <laughs> and I deleted you. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting that on my wall. Just that's a lonely Valentine's Day. <laughs> so, you know, because you are like f still fresh, essentially, in, in this industry. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to accomplish? Like, like, what else do you, do you want to do? I want to just work. Um, I actually was talking to someone about this the other day that I don't really care about like the fame or the money or any, like I grew up dancing for nothing, but I performed all the time. Like it made me so, so happy. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I want to do film. I really, really want to like work on a f long film and really develop a character throughout a film. Um, and I want, I want challenges. I want to play different characters and you know, play so I think that's like my biggest dream is just to be able to work a lot and yeah do you want to like write and produce and direct or anything or oh gosh um you know it's weird I have a lot of ideas but I don't really know how to like put them onto paper like that kind of I don't know if to write them down I you, know, you better ask your boss. That's, like, that's, okay, that's a, now right. Yeah, you need to ask your boss. Talk to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and can we use your studio? And, <laughs> right, right. and your full production team. Right, yeah, right. And do you want to direct it? Right. That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> I'll give you a producer credit. Don't worry about right, that. Right. We gotta... um, I don't know. I feel like acting is such – I don't know how Tyler does it. I feel like I get so consumed in just acting in a role. Like, if I had to worry about writing it and directing it and producing it and, like, all that stuff, I'd probably just, like, fall over. Like, I wouldn't know how to handle it. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to focus on acting for a while, okay. get comfortable in that for a while, and then maybe if I get bored, I'll be like, okay, I want to produce now or, like, right. you know. But right now it's, like, so, like, encompassing that I'll just kind of chill with that for a while. Is there anything outside of acting you would like, or outside of this industry that you've ever thought about doing? I think just my nonprofit and having like a full fledged like ballet studio, okay, um, or dance studio. Um, I I think it's like the most gratifying experience to watch like a little kid like master a move and get like right. that like expression on their face is 
pretty awesome. So I, I love working with kids. And I think that's the only thing I really miss besides now that I'm acting. Um, I actually miss teaching more than actually performing and dancing. So, um, yeah, I'd probably just want to work with kids and have a dance studio eventually. So, nice. Well, so, uh, we'd like to take this time for you to brag about any upcoming projects and stuff that you have um, uh, going on. There's a few things in the works, but I don't want to talk about them yet. Okay. <laughs> then we'll stalk your Instagram you can, and Twitter yeah. page yeah, yeah, to right, see yeah. what it is. So where, where, where can uh, your fans find you online? Um, it's all my name, just Jacqueline Beatham. Um, on Instagram, it's at Jacqueline Beatham. On Twitter, it's at Jacqueline Beatham. On Facebook, it's at Jacqueline Beatham. I haven't really figured out Tumblr. I have one, but... You can follow it, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Google it. Just, just, just you know, go something. there. <laughs> Thank you. Yay. Yeah. It was fun. It was Thanks, fun. Guys. And as always, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Meg Scoop, like scoop of ice cream. You mm. can find me all over the internet. <laughs> you can find me all over the internet at the Nick Padu. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you next time. Bye. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Dario Kristen, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network. If you have questions or comments, tweet us at BHL Online or email us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. For more exclusive content, visit blackhollywoodlive.com. This has been a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network. Hollywood, Hollywood redefined. redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.